joining me on the telecast is Major Mohammad Ali Shamu to start this conversation with you. It's interesting to know that this civil unrest that is taking place in the heart of Pakistan currently has also spread in the tribal regions of Pakistan. There has been an unrest, there have been uh, warring separate rival clans in the tribal areas of Pakistan that are also fighting. And there have been number of number of them that have been killed, number of them that have been injured. Is it all integrating into one common fight for their independence that they have been in seclusion, been fighting for for decades together? Well, uh, Mega, these two tribes they have been uh, it's been a decade year old clash with these two tribes and the clash mm -hmm. over the mountains because the, the the mines over there they are the coal mines are they they have they are very rich in resources now as you rightly brought out there would be a time when there would be there could be a time when pashtunistan and uh, uh, other uh, other the pakistan also can divide further <laughs> cannot rule out that possibility at all because at the time when the economy has totally collapsed but yet the country is into a, almost a civil war like a situation where imran khan and shabazz sharif government on the other hand you can see what's happening in the uh, hilly areas now these people they uh, ethnically they are a little different from the mainstream Pakistan. They are oriental in features, slightly oriental. They are the party, they are the tribal community. But let me tell you again, the inter-family clashes or inter clashes in Pakistan are common. But where the inter-tribal uh, clashes are not so common in Pakistan because the old tribals, they respect each other's culture. There, there is an understanding. Ultimately, the Jirga. The Jirga is who? Jirga is the village elders who come and whenever there is a... Uh, there is a fight or anything, the Jigras assemble together and then they come uh, to, to resolve the clash. So I'll give you a small thing, when in Pakistan, it's, there's a lot of divide in Pakistan, as you say, it could be divided, yes, it could be. Like only 17% of Pakistan has got the Shia community, uh, just for everyone to understand. There's Shia, so these are different, different communities in Pakistan. So the, Shia, the minority community in Pakistan, uh, in the Muslims also, there's a Shia community, the chief of the army staff, General Asim Munir, is a is a Shia. Now there have been only two Shia generals, Chief Army Sahab. Very interestingly to note this, okay, Mega. Before Asim Munir, yeah, General Musa, who was the chief in 1965, General Yahya Khan, who was the chief in 1971. Now coincidentally, incidentally, in 1965, Pakistan went to war with us. They lost. They were thrashed in 1971 when General Yahya Khan again they came to war with us. They got thrashed. 93,000 Pakistani soldiers. Uh, they surrendered. Now, there's been these are the two conventional watch wars and one unconventional war in 1999 when General Parvez Musharraf was on the helm of affairs. So, ja, Nawaz Sharif, in fact, his brother, who's the prime minister, but ultimately is Nawaz Sharif also informally who has a lot of stake. He had appointed General Parvez Musharraf. Why? Because he was a Mujahid. Now, what is the Mujahid? Mujahid is someone from Indian origin who had settled into Pakistan. So, he perceived that perhaps. General Musharraf, when he was lesser known as a core commander, he would not have that kind of a hold over the Pakistani army. And that is the mistake he made. Later on, and General Parvez Musharraf only threw off, he thrown uh, uh, Nawaz Sharif. Similarly, now the General Asim Muzmir is a Shia. So Nawaz Sharif has made the same mistake, I would say again, as they say history repeats itself by appointing a Shia Muslim. And now these Shias, they have a point to prove and to show the loyalty and the nationality and the, uh, so they are eager to perform and to show that what they are capable okay. of. Pakistan can be on a blink of further subdivide mega mm -hmm. and this is something which uh, they, because if they do, if they did not wake up on time, they would lose and that is why they, the status come. And yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay, you've made some important points. Major Muhammad Ali Shah, again, coming back to you into this conversation and what we I have been able to gather is that uh, uh, there is, uh, if we bring about unity within the people of Pakistan and they are the ones who are suffering the most because the politicians, the army generals, uh, the other core commanders, they all are... Uh, have filled their coffers uh, if there is some trouble that brews if there is a civil war all they have to do is just fly to america or fly to uk and live over with their cushy lives where they have bungalows and apartments that they've already bought off uh, 
if if a situation does arises that india has to play a decisive role in creating unity among the people which at this point of time are different warring factions in different parts of the country uh, how do we move about doing those and also wouldn't there be resentment and wouldn't there be uh, opposition that is going to be shown by the chinese because of natural vested interest the chinese have and from the pak and from the american side as well which has always had a soft corner and strategically so when it comes to the state of pakistan Right, that's a very, very good question, Mega. But before I answer this question, I would like to say that General Parihar's analysis was actually bang on. It was very accurate, and I so agree with it. But if you were, if you would be listening to me carefully, I wasn't referring to Pakistan of 1971, and I even mentioned 1965. They are not the same Pakistan of 1965 and 71. I totally agree. I was mentioning about the Shia Prime Minister, the the Shia Chief of Army Staffs of Pakistan, who were there appointed as the chief of the helm. In 1965 and 71, and so is uh, so are we not the same India which we were in 1962 for that matter. Now coming back to the point about what you mentioned about uh, the the getting in case Pakistan wants to unite together, which is impossible. They is they are so divided, such a divided community. And see, it's very easy as a from bird's eye view to look at Pakistan and say it's a Muslim nation. They all Muslim majority of them are Muslim mm. over there, but among the Muslims also, mega there is so much of divide. They are Shias. They are, which are seventy per seventeen percent of Pakistan. They comprise only seventeen percent, and then there are Sunnis, which are the majority. So far, see, imagine a Shia general right now in Pakistan. For us, it's no big deal. But for Pakistanis, a Shia general uh, leading an army of mainly Sunni Muslims, it is a very, very big deal for them. And what my analysis, my perception is, perhaps that's how. That's what even earlier, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Nawaz Sharif had appointed uh, General Parvez Musharraf. That okay. He is a mujahid. He would not have that strong hold on the army. And but look at this. He emerged as one of the most strongest uh, 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 person from Pakistan from there. And because him only, the Kargil war happened ultimately. So now, when we again, when we talk about the clash, the ethnic clash that took place on Monday, that's yesterday. Uh, the the Akhorwal and the Shia Khel, the, the the Sunni Khel, the Akhorwal and the Sunni Khel, they are the, the the two tribes. Now they, it's a the actually Akhorwal is a town in Tara Adam Khel in. Frontier region of Kothal, that is in the federal administrative tribal areas of Pakistan. Mm. Now, Kothal has a population of twenty-two thousand five hundred and fifty-nine people. That's according to two thousand seventeen census that I read. The last census done was was of, of, of is, if my reading was correct was in two thousand seventeen. After they haven't carried out any such census, uh, census, and the FATA University is located there. FATA that I mentioned earlier is the federally administered tribal areas of Pakistan. Now, after coal mines were discovered in Akhurwal province, there have been these clashes over land, over minerals, and over such things. So the government over there had decided in on 23rd July 2017, the government gave a ruling, and the court also gave a similar the same ruling. That rule was decided that the the Pirwal Khel sub sub tribe will receive 27%. Of the income, the Bulaki Khel to receive 36.5 percent of the income, the Gadia Khel to receive 36.5 percent of the income. Hmm. So you can imagine within the province already there is a sort of divide. Who will get what share? This is an example I've given you, right? So you can imagine the larger picture, the big, more communal, more ethnic, more tribal divide Pakistan would be having. So they cannot actually unite. It is actually close to impossible. If okay. we are expecting Pakistanis to unite, they would. They can never unite. Because it's a very, very subdivided. But are you then also divided. saying this? This, this is what the army generals take advantage of, and have been taking advantage of till the since the inception, since the partition took place, and the inception of Pakistan happened, and therefore they are able to control and wrest control, continue to keep control of the Pakistani, the very divisive society that it already is. Absolutely, Mega. So since it is so divisive. And uh, there's a unity of diversity in Pakistan, and it's a very bigoted society. The minorities in Pakistan, forget about the Muslims, uh, the tribes, the minority, the Hindus in Pakistan, for that matter. They, you, the temples are destroyed. One Sikh gentleman joins the army in Pakistan; it becomes the front page headline news. That oh, a Sikh gentleman joins the Pakistan army. So, and in fact, Danish Canadian, uh, uh, yeah. Danish cricketer of Hindi or Hindu origin. In fact, he mentioned over there that you know he was by go, he was he faced discrimination in Pakistan. So look at what what happening in in minorities in Pakistan, minorities in China, minorities in Iran, minorities in Afghanistan. See the best. I I come from a minority community in India, and I can proudly say for a fact that the best country in the world for minorities 
where minority rights are safeguarded and are protected and they're respected is India actually. No matter how much ever people can protest or crib about it, but the very fact remains that minorities are well looked after. They have they they, they are very looked after in India, in fact. So now that is why the strength of our great nation is our unity, our unity in diversity. We are a salad a salad bowl nation. We are not a melting pot, unlike the West, where they uh, people are totally very very different the subcultures. And when we expect a Pakistani, see Baluch, look at Baluch officers. When you know last year there was a plot of on of assassination on General Bajwa just last year, and there were fourteen uh, officers who were arrested. The first thing that came to people's mind. I was speaking to some postmates of mine. They were saying, let's find out if they are Baluch officers or what. They were not Baluch officers. They were regular uh, Pakistani officers. So now it's so much of divide over there. The people from Pakistan occupied Kashmir are protesting that we want to come back. We, uh, we want to uh, re reunite with India. We want to come back there. There's a Pakistani journalist by the name of, uh, I'm forgetting her name. Uh, she, uh, I was on a, with her, with her, with her, with her on a panel recently. And so she also tweeted that her and sisters, uh, Kasmi, so uh, she also tweeted her ancestors made the biggest mistake of migrating from India to Pakistan. Mm. So for that matter, so Pakistan is actually going to. I see there is going to be a civil war. The military will take over. I, that's what my thing is, and it's going to cause further destruction. So it is basically the beginning. Okay. End of Pakistan. Okay. Like uh, again, the same question. A quick, quick response from you, Major Mohammad Alisha, with regards to uh, how the situation can be brought into control. And of course, America would want things to be in control. China would want things to be in control. In in this is going to be directly uh, uh, hampering what India's interest in Pakistan are. You are absolutely right, Mega. There, you know, bang on. See, uh, what I was made to understand from a uh, few other former officers was. When uh, Pakistan got a relief from the Supreme Court just a couple of days back, at that time there was some negotiation apparently which happened where even uh, some uh, delegates from America apparently they were also involved and where they said okay let's get Imran Khan relief from the Supreme Court, uh, for, let's get him the relief and after two weeks we'll see. So the Supreme Court never called his arrest illegal or unconstitutional. They called the way, the manner he was arrested by the Rangers holding the collar and dragging him out and that that entire thing was called as unconstitutional so a person a man who has had over 100 over a century of uh, criminal cases on him and ultimately uh, mariam uh, aurangzeb said said that you know she threatened the supreme court judges that you try getting him released we will uh, burn your houses the interior minister rana sanullah he said okay we will get him inside for some other case if not this then so that cat and mouse game will keep on going and then okay. it's, so it's, it's going to keep on going yeah. and ultimately there's going to be a very devastation for Pakistan completely. Okay, okay. all right. On that note, completely out of time. I thank all my panelists for joining me on the telecast. We'll